How's it going guys? It's Mr. Lone Wolf and uh, today I'm going to go and do this mission called Carrier Rocket Carrier. So bad they named it twice. Uh, t well, overall it went pretty well for me. Like I could see this being a completely horrific mis mission. Overall I think I kind of made some pretty decent choices and yeah, I could certainly see this going a lot worse than it did. It uh, ended up being a pretty long video. I'm already going to start, I'm at now at the entrance to like Northern Aegis. Um, I drove from Erska River to Northern Ages. This is a setup I brought, a Zix with a goddamn horse on the roof. And then I towed a maintenance trailer along with me just for fuel and whatever. I'll drop it off at some point along the map. Just kind of that's what I've been doing every time I come here. I sort of bring a trailer and drop it off somewhere. So uh, yeah, that's the setup and then we'll have a look at like my route. So I'm basically going to go like right across the top. That's the trailer's in like the absolute opposite corner. Now I built like the eroded road there uh, the other day. I built uh, this fallen bridge, so getting along to this point is pretty easy, and then I'm going to go down here. I'm going to have to go kind of up and round here because the bridge is out there. Um, yeah, down here, loop round there. I suppose I could go across the ice and blah, blah, blah. And then in theory, you could go along that road, but I already had the Zix and the Loaf there when I from when I did the mission the other day and I built that last bridge. And I went and scouted down on this ice because I was seriously curious, like, it would help a lot. I just don't like the look of that other way. And it is a little bit awkward, especially there, like, is a bit of a narrow point. We'll get to it and I'll explain more when I'm there. I mean, you'll see. Do it at your own risk kind of thing. The payoff's pretty good if it goes well. Uh, climb over the rock there, that's where, like, you get the loaf engine. There's a gap there to jump back up to, like, this main area. And then, yeah, sort of zigzag through. And uh, I also, and they are in this video, uh, I had to complete, uh, what was it called, Fallen Tower and Landslide in the City or whatever. The reason I wouldn't take it this way is it's a bit awkward anyway, and then you'll have to get through all them trees, which would be an absolute nightmare with an 8 slot. I don't want to bring it this way because you've got all that wiggly road and all the rest of it, So, and I don't want to go that way because of the death ice that's brutal in that section. So yeah, overall, I think I've picked like what I would consider the best route, and like I said, I could see this mission being pretty horrific. I mean, this video is literally as long as I could make it. I couldn't have the footage from me driving from like Erska to here, even if I wanted to. Um, yeah, I've just about managed to keep everything in. I've edited, like, I sped up uh, doing the Fallen Tower and Landslide in the City mission, but this whole mission is pretty much untouched. But uh, yeah, I've had to be a little bit... A little bit strict with some of the editing when I'm doing bits and bobs, but you'll see, it's all uh, going pretty well. So yeah, like set off from the start basically, start going down this road. Best off just flinging a winch to that tree there, because it, when you're bumping over that rock, if I didn't fling that winch out, it just makes your nose slide quite violently to the left, uh, because these tyres just can't really grip uh, onto the rocks well enough. I mean, there's a few icy hills and that going along here. Thankfully, they're not really steep enough, and especially at the minute, I'm not really towing any weight, so just with your kind of momentum and everything, you can, uh, yeah, they're not really an issue, certainly on the way there or anything. Keep, I, I keep meaning to check that road. To the right, that just zips off like... I don't know how bad it'll be going over there, but it appears like it'll cut this little section out. So if you happen to know if that's half decent route then yeah I'd probably go that way instead of through this water section like you don't really get stuck here as such it's just incredibly slow I mean again to be fair this section doesn't really bother me because at least it's like a pretty deep boggy section and all the rest of it, it yeah it certainly has the characteristic of like you're going to be going pretty slow but I'll uh, at some point I'll well it's probably too late because <laughs> I've, I've nearly done every mission on Northern Ages now since I did that thing the other day where I kind of brought enough supplies to do five roadblocks and landslides and all the rest of it and build bridges and all that I uh, yeah I kind of did a fat chunk of that and then with this mission I ended up doing that fallen tower and the landslide in the city and then this mission so there's only like uh, I think two metal beams to build some subway station I've already dropped the metal beam off to build a pylon that will be driving past in about 10-15 seconds. And then I've got to do that humanitarian one where I've got to take two pieces of wood to the monastery and some cargo containers or something. So, yeah, not too far off. Yeah, that's the pylon to my left. But like I said, I've already dropped the metal off there. You have to build the substation first, though, before it'll unlock that mission. Otherwise, I obviously would have just cashed it in and got it done. 
Um, but yeah, as far as we go already, I mean, it should be reasonably smooth sailing at the minute because I've not even got the trailer or anything. But I certainly think this route's pretty nice now, considering this is Northern Aegis and it's just a brutal map. Yeah, I mean, to a degree, I definitely didn't like scouting this map. It was more because of the amount of... I hit three roadblocks before I'd barely even got into the map and I didn't really like like that because uh, yeah it's like just let me uncover some of the map I want to see sort of the map <laughs> and uh but I don't know now I kind of especially now this is cleared and I can sort of get from one end to the other of the map fairly quickly but that being said it's a map that I won't be on all the time anyway just purely because there's no garage on here that's what like kills it quite a lot I was looking um earlier and I think I've got nine loafs on this map three or four zixes, a couple of dolphins and all sorts, and like the amount of time just to recover all of them back to I think it makes you load up to Chinook or Mensk or whatever instead of Erska, but yeah like I'll have to, at each vehicle I'm going to have to sort of watch the loading screen to go to another map. They need to have like a recover all option, or as I've said before just turn the gateway into some kind of like impromptu garage just so if I hit recover it just recovers them well, yeah, it just caches them in, but it just pretends that the gateway square is like a garage for the sake of recovering stuff, because if I've got, like, 15-odd vehicles on this map, yeah, that's going to take, like, 10 or 15 minutes just to recover them all and keep watching, like, 30 load screens. As well, yeah, apologies, I didn't do a video yesterday. I didn't go sleep the night before, uh, as usual, like, I just couldn't sleep, but I, was, I started this mission yesterday, and I... Uh, drove I almost got all the way there and then you'll see like I ended up doing a quit and reload trick just because I was stubbornly trying something out and um, yeah I just while I was waiting for the game to reload I'd, tiredness hit me <laughs> pretty hard and I was like oh I'll just rest my eyes for a minute woke up uh, a few hours later and yeah I just felt ridiculously tired <laughs> I was like I just need to go to bed now like there's no way I'm gonna handle well I'll either stay awake and then finish the video and then edit it all and then voice it all and it'll just not be good because I'm really tired or yeah. So I just go to bed and get some sleep while I actually feel tired for once. Well, feel tired all the time when I feel like I can actually go to sleep for once. Um, yeah, there's a dolphin back there. That was from when I just like sort of left him there when I built, uh, what was that called? Fallen Bridge? Well, it was weird. They've changed it now. It was called Fallen Bridge. But then on one of the menus it was called Old Bridge, but then I think they've synced it up now so it's got like the same name on both things. I think that station to the right of me, that's the substation where I believe I've got to take two metal beams. And I did originally think when I was setting off with this little setup uh, to come back to Northern Aegis, like, well, do I just swing by that warehouse and grab a couple of metal beams? But in the end I was like, sod it, don't overcomplicate the mission at the minute because... I'd heard the rumours about this mission and uh, yeah, I didn't really want to use up my daily allocation of goodwill towards this game. I'm trying to faff around getting uh, some metal beams here on top of everything else. I just edited a bit out there, basically I already knew I was going to go this way, it was cutting round, but I just drove up ahead to, I just wanted to have a look at that, um, like the bridge that's collapsed and yeah, it's a pretty big gap to be trying to jump. Uh, on, well, you'll see, on the way back I end up attempting some kind of on the fly but certainly at least for now I would stick to just going this route because to be fair I mean you're cutting through this little forest but there is a road there's no super snow I don't think that's anything like yeah I'm making decent progress so can't really complain compared to what the gamer does like to do Is that Don 71 again? Oh yeah, that's another mission actually I've still got to do on this. Just drag that to the other side of the map. Never noticed before, there's like some little planks there that you sort of drive up. See, but it's places like this again where chained would be an advantage really. Like I said, I, I, sort of, I won't hold my breath for it, but It'd be really, really nice if they just put some chained on these muds. I then think they would be the new best ties in the game. It 
So there's another free range trailer from earlier. That was way back from when I originally scouted the map with the Zix. It was just further up that path. Funnily enough, it was this Zix. I um I got the trailer just back to the main road because I thought I don't really need to go up that little path anymore, but yeah, it was this Zix that I drove to that main road, disconnected it, recovered this to well again it made me force me to recover to Chinokomant, so then I had to load Erska River. And then drove back in this with another free range trailer. This section here I, always makes me a little bit nervous, not too keen on that section. Just because there's that rock there, and as you can see, I tried to send it under the chassis, but again, without the chain while I was going over it, I just start sliding down to the left because of the camber. And if you start leaning too much there, it can tip you. I did tip there when uh, I was doing the exploration video. I believe I did use the sort of quit and reload method, but... <laughs> Again, the game owes me, so that uh, goes a little way to help him. And yeah, back up that road would be like where that broken bridge is. Which yeah, it would be quite a cool area to try this uh, bridge laying thing. Because even though I reckon there will be invisible walls probably on the actual bridge itself, it does look like there is enough room to at least one side of it where you could put the bridge. Like yeah, and we'll see. Again, when they add that mod. I'll, uh, I'll probably just spend the night trying out a few different places laying bridges and uh, be making a video on if I had any success or not. It's not that often you take suspension damage with this 6, but it's one of those, like, it was a telegraph pole sort of laying across the road. They are pretty trollish. There's a couple of them on, uh, what was it, Amandra? Well, there's, there's a couple on quite a few maps, but I remember them on Amandra. They used to smash my trucks to bits even when I'm going, like, one mile an hour over them. So this is kind of looping around that rock again where I could have gone to the left and gone through the ice or I could go up this way. The reason I went up this way was more because when I'm coming back with the trailer I'm probably going to have to come back this way because it's more of a sweeping bend. At the minute I'd be fine going the other way, cutting across the ice, looping back round over the bridge. But yeah, when I've got an 8 slot trailer I'd have to do like a zigzag shape on the map and I really don't fancy doing that with an 8 slot trailer and uh, funnily enough when I was towing the trailer back yeah kind of all of the things that I dislike about the 8 slot and the reason why I don't use it and I'd as much as I hate the ramped flatbed as well I'd rather use the ramped flatbed just by a small margin um, yeah the 8 slot is just a terrible trailer and in a way they've kind of uh made it a little worse for this trailer. I mean, I'll save that for now. I'll go into detail when the relevant footage is on the screen. That was understeering there, by the way. I was turning left for quite a while, but it just was having none of it. I could see that coming about five seconds before it happened. Yeah, there's me uh, trailer from when I did the... Uh, finish those sort of landslide and bridge building missions the other day and yeah in theory if you look on the map you're supposed to go down here and you can see that road going off to the right kind of starts weaving up around the mountains but as I had a zix and a loaf kind of where that trailer was I pre-scouted down here and that's one reason like um, why I do tend to leave vehicles like if I know I've got plenty of missions left on a map I do leave vehicles scattered around and in this situation it was handy to pre-scout it so before I even set off with this Zix I already knew that I'd probably be trying this method. Yeah, I mean that road up there, I'm sure it's doable, it wouldn't be as bad now with the uh, just the Zix and the maintenance trailer but I really don't fancy coming back that way with the trailer and you'll see from like now I mean again there's one risky bit here so it's up to you, the payoff is quicker if you can make it work or you can go that mountain way and yeah, like I should imagine that's going to be an absolute pain in the ass. With the 8 slot trailer, you're best off crossing over here because if you look ahead on the right hand side, like the rock goes all the way to the water. And basically, it's along here, this gap coming up is pretty bloody narrow. And funnily enough, when I scouted this, I made it first time, so I kind of thought, oh, it's doable, it's not that bad. You'll see now, I do uh, my tyres slip off. 
in a way you don't really want to steer when you're doing it because your inside tyre clips that rock and it bumps your other tyres just over the ledge. I did have a couple of goes. I was doing the quit and reload method. So if you do go this way, my advice would be when you get near there, just wait for the saving cogs to come up and then you can make sure you can definitely quit and reload. But as you can see, if you're careful and you keep your tyres pretty straight, so you don't, like, steering kind of, yeah, it bumps you over a bit too far. It is doable to get over there. I detached the trailer. I'm, I don't really think that would have made much difference. I was just kind of doing it. Yeah, I don't really know. Just one of those things. That just kind of did it just in case. But thinking about it, I don't really yeah, think there's much to be gained from that. So let's just say that I got over that first time. I know I didn't, and that's fair enough. That was my time to waste. And like I said, I stubbornly just wanted to try it. So... I was well aware and prepared to accept that I'm probably going to waste a bit of my own time doing it, but it is doable, and as you can see now, it's a pretty easy drive for the rest of this like map, instead of going through all the mountain roads where it looks like there's big rocks and all sorts, and again, because this doesn't have chained, it's not amazing on rocks, it's not too bad here because they're flat rocks, but you can still see, like it's not that grippy. Uh, there's a tree there, so... I could fling a winch out and it makes sure I definitely won't slip off into the water. But yeah, I mean, there you go. Like, you're literally talking like a minute or two to get down here. And more importantly, when I'm going back with the trailer, that feels to me like it could uh, cut out just, yeah, a section of the map that will make me already hate the mission before I've barely got started. <laughs> So, if you haven't already done these, uh, the Fallen Tower and the Landslide in the City mission, as I'm coming up here, I'll just sort of show you with the camera and then show you it quickly. Those little sheds behind the house is where the uh, trailer with the wood is, in those. So I'm just going to stop this here and then quickly show you the footage of when I did that. Like I said, I've sped them up. Or most of them, so it's like, yeah. But basically, you got to go along there, and there's a trailer there with metal beams. Bring it back, and then Fallen Tower is just to the, like, the le uh, right of where my truck is. And yeah, the wooden planks are in that little shed, and you've got to bring it to the other side of the bridge. Strictly speaking, you don't need to do this uh, landslide in the city one. It's in there, you see, when I beat my horn, all that wood breaks, and it's in there. Um... Yeah, you don't need to do this one, but as you can see, it's literally like as you go over the bridge. I just wanted to test something out. I tipped the trailer and tipped the wood out of it and then reset the mission, but it didn't reset the trailer. I just wanted to see if I could duplicate wood. Um, yeah, it would like, obviously, I was hoping it would like delete the trailer from where it was and put it back in that shed with two pieces of wood in it. It was just, I was curious because obviously you need a lot of wooden planks on this map. And I just thought it might be a little cheat that I could let you guys know about. Um, but yeah, it didn't appear to work. I, I'll have to go back and double check in that shed to make sure there's not another trailer. But yeah, I don't believe it did work. And then yeah, after you're over the bridge, sort of turn left, go down there, grab this trailer and bring it to here. So between both the missions, they only took like five or six minutes. And again, if the video had the room, I could have just left them in at normal speed. But they're done. This was where now, like... I just did that uh, fallen tower. It was blocking me, or blocking the road about here. And as I turn left now, I'm just going to edit because I drove a little bit further up and then reversed back and dropped that maintenance trailer off there. Just because I thought there's no point in leaving it like right in the corner where this trailer is. Because the only time I'd ever go that far is like specifically for the trailer, which, uh, yeah, I'm about to grab, so. Not much point there, you can see me with a Zix and Loaf. Put down my horse. Um, that's what I was scouting with just before I started this mission. So there's the trailer. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's the 8th slot. It's basically the 8th slot. It's just got those sort of things that hold the rocket. And then basically, I'm pretty much going to go back the way I came because I do still believe that's the best way, really. And I am going to risk going back across that ice instead of that mad mountain road again. Do it at your own risk, um, but yeah, I have no regrets. <laughs> I'm glad I went that way. 
Even though, again, I did slip off and I did waste some time. And who knows, maybe I could have gone that mountain way and just absolutely breezed it, but something tells me that's highly doubtful. Not only with this trailer, but how that road looks when I just look on the map. So that's one of the things with this 8 slot. I get because it's a pretty long trailer, but yeah, you, like, you have to go pretty wide because it cuts corners like a beast. It's doubtful I'll ever cash them in, but I suppose doing that um, landslide in the city and Fallen Tower mission, you end up getting two free sideboard trailers. Which, uh, yeah, like I said, the chances of me ever collecting them and towing them all the way back to Erska River are slim to none, but it's a thought that counts. I'm still hoping <laughs> that one day they just add the option where, like, you can just recover a trailer instead of just deleting the trailer. When, before my map got all messy, if the delete trailer option was already just in the game from the beginning, I possibly would have used it, but by now, it's like I'm not deleting a million or two million quid's worth of trailers that are all over the place, especially now they've patched that money glitch one day. I might have to spend a, uh, a whole day just recovering trailers. Not looking forward to that one. I mean, already you can see with this trailer, one thing I did notice, I don't know if they've, it feels like they've nerfed the Zix again, or this trailer is just weighted ridiculously heavy, but to be honest, this Zix felt a little bit gutless just trying to tow the empty trailer, even along bits like here, really. I mean, I'm in high-low, but I was kind of putting it in high-low because it felt a little bit limp in, uh, in auto. And like I say, maybe they've... Uh, like as it is a sort of special mission trailer they might have already put the weight on as if it's already got the rocket on so my suspicion my guess and my gut feeling would be that the next mission where this will have the rocket on it and you've now got to tow it from Erska to Cosmodrome it'll behave the same and it'll weigh the same Yeah, this is that rock where uh, you get the loaf engine. And, well, you'll see. I mean, obviously it's, uh, it'd be nicer if it wasn't there, but I wouldn't say this is like the end of the world awkwardness. A couple of winches on the tree. Again, funnily enough, the part of what's making me go a bit slower now is because these cha uh, cause the muds don't bite into the rock. That's why I'm putting the winch from like the middle of my vehicle to that tree to try and so I can still steer my front end round and everything. Um, yeah, if I had chained, I probably could have possibly just done that in one sweeping driving motion. See, and then it started to try and slip off to the uh, the right a bit. And that's the thing with uh, trailers that go on, like, your saddle high or saddle low. Um, yeah, when you drop off a ledge like that, obviously, I, I pretty much have to stick the whole trailer in the air. Like, it doesn't hinge that way. Which the ramped flatbed would, but the ramped flatbed probably would have rolled by now, just because that seems to be its intention 99% of the time. But yeah, as you can see, I wouldn't say that was, like, horrifically awkward or anything. It took a minute or so, but nothing too special. I'm crossing over to this side here, like, when I came from the other way, I, there's another little crossing point further up here. I crossed over now just because it gives me more options for which angle I want to approach with the trailer. And there's all kinds of ways in my head, like, I was thinking I could sort of reverse the trailer through the gap first. It'll probably be in the water and, I don't know, all sorts of mad things here. I mean, I'll show you in the end what I think worked quite well. I end up bringing my other Zix, that Zix and Loaf that I uh, just left where I picked this trailer up from. 
and that ends up helping a bit but my advice at this point would be how I drove here with like just this Zix and the loaf and the maintenance trailer if I towed say a step tow with me or something with the saddle high the Zix sits pretty wide so it actually struggles quite a bit to get through this gap a normal truck like a step tow or a Voron Grad or whatever I think would be narrow enough to get through there pretty easily so as you can see I tipped I did the quit and reload method I brought the Zix over and as you can see I tried again and I started slipping in the water but I stuck a winch onto the Zix so I didn't roll or anything like that and then turn the engine on on the Zix and I can uh, yeah like there was enough power between the both of us to just sort of pull me back out there I just put the winch, I believe, like, when I winch to that Zix from the back of the trailer, it doesn't give me the option to start the engine and stuff. I'm sure it was doing that. So I was trying to drag the Zix close enough that if I winch from the side of the trailer, it seemed to offer me that chance. But as you can see, and I think by having the winch attached to the Zix as well, even if my tyres started to slip off a bit, I couldn't slip any more because I'd have to pull the Zix. I don't know, just... There you go. I got through. It's easy when it works. And again, I think the payoff kind of I essentially cut out almost 25% of the map, like driving back. And something in my gut tells me it's a pretty bad 25% of the map as well. The next 25% coming up is probably equally as bad. But yeah, I don't know. I'm glad I did it. But there was a good few uh, quitting reloads there. And again, I was happy to do that because I just stubbornly wanted to make it <laughs> by this point. But I don't know, that would be my couple of bits of advice. You either go the mountain way and, you know, take whatever that way is going to give you. Um, or, yeah, bring a narrower vehicle. And then, yeah, you could sort of get the trailer through that easier. Or do the uh, quit and reload method. Or have, like, another Zix like I was where I was winched to it on the inside. So it was always kind of pulling me back towards it a little bit. Or as another option that I was thinking as a backup, I could have drove that other Zix into the water at the narrowest point so that when I drive through, I can either, depending on how deep it is, I can either pretty much drive on the truck or at least, like, if my wheel slips off the edge, I'll just bump into the truck in the water and I can't really fall any further in. So I'm now connecting back to the road where, in theory, if I went the mountain way, I'd, I'd sort of end up at this point anyway. And yeah, already, I mean, the trailer's going bloody slow because it's such a long plank thing and uh, more than that, it's all the stuff underneath it that just sits so low. I mean, even when you're on flat ground, those legs on the trailer, they sit like a couple of inches above the floor. I mean, they're practically touching the floor even when they've been lifted up. And then, as you can see, all down the length of the trailer, there's like boxes and things all lining underneath that they can catch on stuff. And yeah, the big thing that makes this trailer worse, really, is those things that are kind of made to sit the rocket on. They can hook onto things, which you're about to see coming up. And again, this is where I find it weird with missions like this, because it's almost like they bank on the inadequacies of the game to up the difficulty, but again, it's not really difficulty, it's just poor game design in some sense. And not at the minute, I'm fine at the minute, like, fair enough, there's rocks to jump over and all the rest of it, it's, I wasn't expecting just to have a nice, smooth, easy drive, but you'll see what I mean, I think I'm justified in sort of saying that this is bad game design coming up. It just feels like, they, did they even test run this mission? I'm pretty sure as well it wasn't letting me, that lamppost wasn't giving me a winch point, I'm sure it was that. So basically, as I'm driving, look, the back of that trailer keeps hooking that. I reverse, the trailer starts sliding over to the right. It's far enough away from the lamppost. When I drive forward, just where the rocks are positioned, they bump the trailer 
on the same path every time and it catches on that lamppost and again I just think that's bad game design because I can't help that and literally I mean I cut a chunk out I was just sat there for ages trying to winch here there there's no winch on the other side to just winch the trailer away from the lamppost so I just literally had to like, fuck around for five or ten minutes sort of reversing driving forward trying to jiggle around do all sorts but there was like zero skill involved it was pure luck it's like and the worst thing was the hitbox is like it looked like it was missing but there's obviously more hitbox to the lamppost than what it looks like in the game so yeah it was getting hooked on like thin air and um yeah that was just a section where it's like for god's sake and it wasted five or ten minutes of like I said there's no skill or preparation to get around it just the way they laid the rocks and all the rest of it the trailer naturally follows its own path bumping over the rocks and yeah the back of the trailer gets caught on that lamppost but there's not any other good options or routes to go like I said if I went over the bridge that I built I'd have to kind of zigzag and that'd uh, not really go too well and yeah if I go the other ways on the map there's like a wiggly S bend one way and like I said the trees the other way so there's that telegraph pole across the road that damaged my suspension a bit on the way. Sort of made me swerve there but it didn't damage me or anything. But the nice thing is to a degree that's a good chunk of the difficult part of the map out of the way. I mean going that ice route I still am happy with. Um, that cut out sort of all that section and then yeah I just had that which looked pretty quick and smooth on the map. Like I said it, I had it out five or ten minutes of me dicking around with that lamp post but other than that it's uh, now there's sort of a normal drive well for a couple of minutes but as you can see I keep getting slowed down and it's because this trailer sits so low to the ground that when you're going over the brow of a hill it's the trailer now digging into the floor even though it's not even like a particularly sharp brow of the hill obviously it doesn't help at the minute not having chain because it is kind of an icy hill but you can see obviously there's one tyre touching but the legs and those boxes under the trailer and that will be digging into the floor Right, now I drew it on the map and like it'd be the way I also um, drove to this trailer. Oh yeah, I'm stuck again. <laughs> and the way this game sort of works, it's quite extreme when it gets stuck because the legs kind of just dig into the map and stick. They don't really necessarily always just cut through the uh, the terrain or whatever, especially on bits like this where it's solid road. So they really do get hooked. Um, yeah. I could go up that way to the left. Straight ahead is that broken bridge. You can see I've drawn it. I wouldn't go left. I would attempt the broken bridge. The reason why, I got up to here and I was like, oh god, it's that section with camber where you have to try and drive over the rock. Trying to get the bloody 8th slot down that hill and back up will be horrific and I'll probably roll. Now when I reverse down here, the trailer I was trying to reverse the trailer the same way that I drove up the hill, but because the non-chained was slipping around, I couldn't get the same angle, got them stuck in the tree, had to go around that lamppost, a pain in the ass. I should have just carried on driving forward. And my plan now, by the way, was just to drive this trailer as close to this gap as I could, detach it, drive just my Zix the way I'd got drawn on the map, drive to the other side of this basically and then winch the trailer over but when I got here I was like oh hang on a minute actually there is like you know it looks sort of drivable over here to the right of it so I jumped down there but I jumped down a bit too far to the left away as you can see like not the best uh, place so I did quit and reload because yeah it saved me a bit of time it owed it me after that stupid lamppost um, just jumped off here a little bit further to the right And uh, yeah, disconnect trailer, which is fine. Like I said, I was originally planning, yeah, to disconnect trailer like now, but still not have fallen down this ledge. Go all round the long way. 
and essentially reverse up to here, winch the trailer and just yank it over the gap. So the trailer starts, stip starts tipping and funnily enough I thought, fine, I'll just drag you like this because obviously I, j I just had in my head then, like, it's the 8 slot, it's just a flat sheet of metal. Um, yeah, those bloody rocket things that hold the rocket are obviously, like, glitching into the floor and that's it, it's just anchored solid. And then when I was winching it now, it kind of ended up just sitting sideways on my truck and again, I was like, sod it, drop the hammer, if it's working, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. However, I think around now, yeah, obviously found something to catch into or whatever. I couldn't steer, I was trying to steer over to the left, but it wasn't having it, so yeah. I just had to stick a winch on, flip the thing. And again, just quit edit, but done. And yeah, I mean, as far as vehicles like that I'd recommend to do this, I mean, the Zix, oh, it wasn't bad. There is the Colob as well. I wanted something that sits nice and high, and, like, the back of this Zix does sit reasonably high. So does stuff like the Colob. The thing is with the Colob, you can't have chained on that. And the muds, because the, this has got custom muds, I'd say they're better than the muds that the, the Colob gets. I think the Dolphin could do this as well, but overall the chassis, I should imagine, sits lower than this. Um, yeah. So, I don't know. I mean, this is, it's got to be a good contender for doing this mission, the Zix. So, uh, as you can see, overall, I don't think getting over that gap was that bad. And I honestly think it was better than weaving through the woods. And uh, a little bit trollish when the trailer flipped over. But, to be fair, because those rocket carrier things actually dig into the floor... It was quite easy to flip the trailer back because it can't really slide sideways along the floor. It had to dig in and, yeah, flip. So at least like that's a nice little consequence of it being more trollish. It's, uh, yeah, at least doesn't just slide uh, when it's upside down indefinitely. And the nice thing is now back at this point... It's pretty smooth sailing drive all the way out of Northern Ages now. And that's why overall I think going this way is the best. Because when you look at all the other ways, like they look pretty trollish all the way. There might be the odd little nice section that's quite easy. But yeah, whereas with this, I mean that 90 degree corner I just turned like 30 seconds ago or whatever. That's almost like half the journey done now. And... Uh, when I got over that gap, in fact, where that bridge was out, that's kind of probably like 40% of the journey. So this last 60% is actually pretty easy. See, look, just tiny little bump in the road. The legs or the boxes got caught and the whole trailer swung around like a pendulum. It didn't really matter in the end, but that's how easy it is to catch on stuff. Back at this little boggy section, I was going over to the left, but then I could see how bumpy the terrain was, and I was like, sod it, just go back in this water bit, because at least overall it averages out, like, reasonably flat all the way across. So again, like, catching the trailer is the biggest problem with this trailer, really, overall. That's what will just slow you down, slash, stop you dead, no matter how powerful your vehicle is and all the rest of it. It's a bit like how my Hummers are glitched in the cliffs in uh, White Valley. I, in a video ages and ages ago, I drove a twin steer flat out, like as I was jumping off the cliff, stuck a winch to a Hummer that was in the cliff, and it stopped my twin steer at full speed, mid air, stopped it dead. Like, once something glitches into the map, it's, yeah, no amount of, like, force really. Again, when that trailer, funny enough, an eight slot, wasn't it, got glitched into the bridge on flooded foothills, it was only because my Losa got done professional that I got that out. Otherwise, it'd still be there now. Well, I suppose now they've added the option to delete trailers. See, here, there's quite a lot. On the way, it wasn't too bad because I was going downhill on all these bits. But, um, yeah, some steep enough icy hills. That's why I'm just going into the banks at the side, like the banks of snow.
Now I'm going to sort of jump over to the other side of the road, mainly because that lamp post that just went past that was on my left. If I now stayed on the inside, I'm pretty sure with how the road leans a little bit, that back carrier part on the trailer would hook onto that bloody lamp post. If it didn't, it'd probably hook onto that telegraph pole. Get another icy hill that I'm gonna try and get over, and this is when it will more affect you now. If you've not got any trailers or anything on, sometimes just with your the amount of momentum you've got, you can sort of just keep your momentum going and get up some of the icy hills with the zicks. But particularly when you've got stuff like this where there's like a lot of weight behind you dragging you back, then yeah. see there like just trying to jump over to the other side to the other snow bank like I pretty much stopped dead I believe that's the trailer getting caught again Well, I certainly don't think it was lack of power or anything like that, so... And I don't think it was lack of grip there, because I was still in the snowbank. <laughs> Again, bottoming out on the road. I mean, those tyres on the trailer, and they need more axles, like further towards me. Even if they were like a smaller set of tyres that just sit like an inch lower than the frame of the tyre, uh, than the frame of the trailer so that instead of bottoming out at least it would hit a set of tyres. But yeah, we're almost off uh, Northern Ages. Now, like I said, most of the rest of the uh, drive was uh, pretty smooth. So again, the last sort of major icy hill, I think. Like I said, on the way there, a lot of the, you hit all these, they're downhill. Didn't quite realise how many uphill icy sections there was until I was on the way back here. Again, I just forgot to look a bit too late, but as I'm building up that road that goes off to the left now, because I've never gone that way before, I just didn't know. If there's a load of like height change in the terrain, that's where the trailer will dig into the terrain. Whereas going this way, well, I mean, now it's going to dig in, but once I get over that and down into the water, it'll sort of, yeah. A lot easier not to catch it on everything. I mean, this you'll see how well it's caught in the map now. I'm trying to drive forward and I'm winching the trailer to kind of pull me forward. And it's hooked into the map so well that it starts twisting the trailer around that way and then trying to flip it upside down. And even though the trailer and me are kind of in an L shape at the minute, it's even trying to tip me. That's how desperate it is not to let go of the map. Which I personally think is broken levels, because, yeah, in real life, stuff doesn't just touch the floor and then anchor to it like the world's strongest magnet. Although, to a degree, I was, the reason I kept pulling on the winch and let the trailer tip sideways was because, yeah, there's like, it'll finally get the legs out of the terrain. Yeah, as you can see, once I got over that bit, I could winch these trees on the other side, and because this more dips down and back up, there's nothing for the uh, 
the legs and the bottom of the trailer to catch on. It's when you go over the brows of hills that it gets you. Going into like the dips and back up the other side is the sort of best case scenario. Oh yeah, quick edit there, but I, I was almost out of fuel, so I um, unpacked the loaf, switched to the loaf, used the roof rack on the loaf to fill my zix up. I believe by now I've already used the um, roof rack on the zix as well. So that section's not too bad there. There's not really any rocks in the middle of the road. There's a little kink in the road with that, but yeah, it's like it's actually not that bad. Again, though, the trailer's bottoming out, and that's the only thing that I think like the dolphin would be capable on most of this mission, but it's you'd lose even more ground clearance, I think, because I'm pretty sure the dolphin would sit a bit lower, even though it's probably got a slightly like high a saddle high that's sort of got spacers to lift it up a bit. Yeah, the chassis of this does sit pretty... I mean, maybe I'll have to park them both next to each other and see. And this bit's a little awkward, but it, to be honest, it's more awkward going the other way. As you can see, if you just hit that rock pretty quick and jump over it, you sort of get back onto grippy terrain before your nose starts swinging to the right in this case going this way yeah it's the last little uh, snowy icy hill so get over into some snow banks he's a good damn horse he's looking good oh something had to get hooked one last time not entirely sure what if I'm honest but usually the way. <laughs> See again it's doing it if I just make it to that gateway. That was a little glitch there, good for the computer. You had the right idea that time. So yeah, travel through the gateway, now I'm on Ersk River and this is the way I'm going down there, through that village, jumping over that rock and going along the ice because again it's a nice smooth drive climb my way back up onto the main road and follow it to, yeah, it's that building like right in the middle of the map really, where uh, I think you should have already done the mission where you had to collect the rocket parts that were scattered around Erska. I can't remember what it's called, but I've done a video on it and I did it on, uh, on my mod playthrough on the live stream last week, I think, as well. On the live stream this week, I'm kind of tempted to do my normal playthrough and I might do one of these block alpha missions, but I don't know. I'll have a look through the mods if there's some cool new mods and whatever then uh, yeah maybe I'll do another modded live stream certainly does help things go a bit smoother to be honest I can probably get more missions done on the modded live stream than a non-modded one because everything's so bloody slow on these maps uh, yeah trailer getting caught on the terrain again I mean, I can't work it out. It feels like there's not as much oomph with the Zix as there was, like, yesterday, the day before, etc. I don't know. It, I mean, it could well be this trailer. I'm just going to edit, like, to the other side of that ice. It's just slow, and to be honest, at the time, I was, like, 59 minutes, 58 seconds. Well, I was actually about 60 minutes and 15 seconds, so I needed to get it under 60 minutes, and I cut that a little bit out. I just found another bit, though, that earlier on that I could cut out, hence why shaved a minute and a half odd off the uh, off the video. Yeah, this was the trailer I dropped off the other day, which uh, was well worth it, when I was bringing all the materials to build all them roadblocks. And this is why, I mean, I got there, I still had 80 litres of fuel in the loaf, so I could have made it a bit further, but my uh, both roof racks on the Zix and the loaf were empty, and the Zix fuel itself was practically empty, so uh, yeah, if I'd put the 80 litres from the loaf it would have got me certainly a lot closer. I'm not sure, to be honest. We'll see. 
If I'm on less than 300 litres by the time I get there, then I assume it uh, wouldn't have made it. But yeah, that's literally why I scatter free range maintenance trailers all over the place. It's funny with the trailers because you've got the maintenance trailer that's got 2,000 litres and repairs, and the other dedicated fuel trailer has only got 2,000 litres as well. And that acts weird with the fuel weight, like it's five times heavier than the maintenance trailer. Got caught on those rocks, so I disconnected the trailer. I kind of had a feeling this would happen. Uh, yeah, stuck a winch on it. I mean, first thing, you can see how well it's caught into the terrain that I can lift the whole trailer. But secondly, why have I now got the power to lever the trailer like that? When I'm connected to it and I get hooked on something, I've got no guts to be able to try and just force it over like that. But yeah, kept uh, yanking it. <laughs> yeah, that's what she said. Um, reverse back under it, attach it. And we're good to go. I mean, that's all I needed to get over the rock was those legs. That's what was uh, sort of digging in there. They're most of the time what always bloody digging. As you can see again, though, nice smooth sailing, which that's what I was aiming for, is as much flat ice I can drive across as possible because that's the one place where the trailer just can't catch on anything because it's nice flat ground. And like I said, so far I've got kind of no regrets on the uh, the route I take or took. I'd probably recommend it, except like I said, at your own risk, that little ice section near the trailer that I did. I'm still glad I did, but just know that I did have to save, like quit and reload a couple of times. But yeah, maybe for some of you it might come in handy because if you hate this trailer as much as me and know how painful it's going to be dragging it around that mountain road. Like I said, I was glad I did it. Um, I got stuck on these rocks, and I mean stuck. I couldn't go forward, couldn't go backwards. It wouldn't let me winch to that telegraph pole or lamppost, whatever. In the end, I'd, there you go, it won't let me winch to it. I disconnected the trailer. Still couldn't get off. Uh, I had to put a winch from my truck to the trailer whilst I hit reverse and that was just enough to lean me over a bit and get the grip with some tyre. Uh, again, quick edit, but yeah. Stick the trailer back on. I mean, overall, it is a, a lot of vehicles in this game are pretty crap at climbing rocks. Like I said, ironically, the Loaf is like the best vehicle in the game for climbing rocks. It climbs rocks that are taller than it. Yeah, other vehicles can't even climb rocks that are like half the size of the tyres. It's trying to be a... Uh, trying to aim it for that lamp post over there, but it was having none of it. Not with the auto winch, anyway. Grabbed one of my free-range trailers. You never know, though. If I'm ever in the area and I need a ramp flatbed, I know where to come. See, so yeah, overall, like, the icy section I drove across was fine. I got beached on them rocks, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, yeah, got up that bridge, though, quite easily. And now I'm basically onto the main road, which, ironically, straight back to uh, the trailer digging in, getting caught every two seconds. And that's what I'd say this mission more is. It's an exercise in patience. Like I said, I only have a certain amount of goodwill for the game every day. I can only allocate a certain amount before I'm like, fuck this. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done for the day. Um, yeah. This is that kind of mission that usually, if, again, I think pre things went pretty bloody smoothly for me overall. Um, as I said, I could see this mission easily going horribly wrong and just being a complete nightmare that takes like four or five hours. A bit of that daylight back. Thankfully, again, it's a big icy hill, but this first bit of it is like uh, snow. 
So I was ticking along just fine then, but <laughs> because the trailer dug in somewhere, it immediately stalled me in high gear. Yeah, it's now where the icy road kicks in, so again, line yourself up to keep one side of your tyres in the, uh, the snow bank along the edge. <laughs> Which I managed for a few seconds and then swerved off to the middle of the road. So you can sort of see there though, my truck was skidding around left and right a bit there. It's more as the trailer was digging in a bit, not enough to fully stop me. But yeah, it's kind of once it pulls back on your saddle, you just your truck starts to skid around a little bit. Which makes you a little bit imprecise with the driving. It's not the end of the world, I'm just sort of saying that's why. And of course it's got stuck again. I mean, if a trailer gets beached that easy, it's barely fit for normal use, let alone, like, <laughs> an off-roading game. I think this trailer will have a hard enough time on, like, Euro Truck Simulator. Just going along flat motorways all day. Still find something to beach on. Beach on roadkill or something. Nice view going along there, though. Over to the uh, right more. Sort of where the quarry is, I suppose. We're getting close, though. I can smell victory. Funnily enough, what's about to happen, I was picturing happening in my head. I just knew it would. I was thinking, right now, all that could happen now is a jackknife. And what happens? Like, yeah, because I'm going along an icy road, my back end just stepped out. I didn't steer or anything, it just... That's it. <laughs> it went through it. But, like, I was literally saying it to myself, like, a few seconds before it happened. Done. Like I said, overall, I think it went pretty smoothly. Like I said, I've heard the rumours, a lot of people have said they've done this mission in the comments and it's a bit of a horrific beast. So there's the trailer now that's got all the stuff on it and everything. Is it like 15 grand? I mean, again, a little bit stingy. Should be more like 30 grand for that. Um, yeah, I've delivered the rocket parts here. Now the trailer, that's all built and then I'd have to take this trailer, just sort of show you a quick look of it, to uh, Cosmodrome, which I'll get done at some point. But yeah, that's about it for today though. I hope you enjoyed, I hope that helps. Thanks for watching, thanks to our Patreon members. Get yourself a loaf because he's got damn horse, and I'll be back soon.